those of you who like a bit more aggressive style of play, not really looking for a framework v framework kind of game, uh, we'll probably enjoy this one. We'll probably enjoy this one. So we have we have a four don versus a three don. But don't let the ranks fool you. If you have not been paying attention to who White is, you should, because he is a very very strong Chinese player. So we have a regular-ish opening. And the reason why I say it's regular-ish, because unlike what I usually go over that doesn't have any kind of unorthodox kind of play. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this one, picked rather quickly, is in fact going to. It is going to feature a 5-3 point. Oh. Not at all what I normally go over. How is White going to use this stone? We have no idea. And no, anyone who's looking at this and thinking, great, he's finally lost his mind and he's going to go over the Taisha. No, we're not doing that. That is most assuredly not in this game. But it's Black's turn. And he can do all sorts of fun stuff. He can enclose himself, large or small, if he so wishes. He can approach if he so wishes, but how to approach the 5-3 stone? Well, really, you don't have to give it any special consideration. You can approach normally, where you would if the corner was available. You could say, you know what, I'm not interested in the corner, and maybe I'm just going to let you take the corner and I take the outside. That's pretty popular, too. That's completely fine. You can do that. You can do that. Uh, let's see, you can also say, I am going into super territorial mode and I am going to hit your 3-3 three, three point, which is what we see here. So alright, Black has said that I am interested in all the territories, White clearly not, given E17 presence on the board, develops some influence. He's looking apparently to maybe get some kind of an approach here. All right. Let me see what uh, good follow-ups he might have for himself. Now, this can be a little bit uncomfortable, trying to find follow-ups here with the 3-3. You can't play this move if you don't like some form of aggression. Because one thing you can't do is simply say, you know what, from here, I'm going to play b15 to ensure I have a corner. I have seen that from a few Q players. I'm sure no one here or watching this later would think to play such an unusually passive move. But I have seen it around. Know that you are playing the slowest move available to mankind. Instead, uh, oh, yes, there is a crosscut here. Because black attaches. White could just not Hane and say, you know what? I'm I, I don't want I don't want I don't want complication. I, I just want influence. So tell you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you influence. Or I'm gonna get influence. You're gonna get you know all the territory, and then I'm gonna hopefully do something with the wall. That would be a little unusual. A little bit passive. Way too much being given away. It's black. I don't think there's ever an opportunity to play this unless something drastically weird has happened on top of the board in which White's got just amazing amounts of influence. Since it's, oh, since it's the beginning of the game, we know we don't have that. No reason not to go ahead and Hane, which will elicit a crosscut from our opponent. Now, there are a couple of variations here. White says, you know, I, I'm just gonna, uh, what to do? Yeah, I, I'm, mm, I'm just gonna play here and force you to protect. I mean, there are a couple of things we can do. I mean, sometimes people try to play this out. A uh, slight problem with playing this out. Can anyone tell me what that is? I hope you can. I hope someone gets it.
Yeah, a little bit of a broken ladder, so this doesn't make any sense. So we can see exactly why he played this move. Because the, the more aggressive Atari variation, it just doesn't work for us. Not on this board, not on this board. So, okay. Can't do that. Gonna connect. Gonna do likewise. And then, of course, save cutting point. Cutting stone, rather. Why? Because white can't kill our corner right now. How do we know that? Because, let's see, if black gets one more move in, I mean, you can clearly see that's going to be a living shape. If white wants to poke at it, uh, how is he going to do that and protect against the poke point and still poke here and kill him? I mean, that's a little bit too much to ask of anyone. So white pokes, black says, yep, I'm alive, what of it? White says, well, if you're alive, I'm going to attack your cutting stone, because that's what we have to do. And now this game, for Kaji, is turning into one in which he looks like he's getting a bit of influence that uh, it's got to use. Upside, there are cutting stones that we can attack. Now, here's something that's interesting for white, or for black, rather. Most people here would be like, all right, I need to make shape here. My cutting stones, because those are important. So I'm going to jump out, or maybe I'm going to play here, and then make this kind of shape. Maybe even just do a two space immediately, or if I'm really feeling aggressive, maybe I can kind of lean this way on the top group and just make some shapes. But Black's like, no. I'm going to attack here. You're, you're probably going to split me. You're probably going to split me. But all, all I'm really looking to do is to settle myself. Either getting lots of stuff on the right, be fine with that, or lots of shape in the middle, be fine with that too. So we're trying to be nice and flexible here by putting pressure on his opponent. White says, I learned divide and conquer at a very young age. Black threatens to surround, not because he thinks in, for a second that he's going to be able to kill anything. This isn't sort of a I'm going to kill you kind of move. This is just, you're going to struggle against my stones, those stones are going to get stronger kind of move. Because we know with all of these cut points, there's no way we can hold this. So alright, white does a struggle, 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 and struggle, struggle, struggle. Double Atari, black's going to connect, so white gets you know, a bit of base for himself. And the center stones, like magic, are suddenly stronger. They were just two stones, not very uh, impressive, nothing spectacular about them. Uh, but with his Hane, sure, they got a little bit of influence next to them. If we look around the board uh, right now, we have no idea whose turn it was. We'd be thinking to ourselves, oh my god, white really needs a move over here before black starts to put a lot of pressure on uh, these three stones and does a lot of trouble with it. Or, you know, white really needs moves up top of the board before black completely surrounds and gets a lot there for himself, too. So, black's not doing too bad this game. Not doing too bad this game at all. Which is why this turned into a very, very scrappy game. White's being forced to just go back and live immediately. So there, he lives there in Sente. Doesn't have to go back and take G18. Doesn't go anywhere. Can poke here. Force a live by threatening the top. Now we have to kill it, allowing black to go back and live in Gote. Oh, sorry, missed a comment. Also makes black alive because of D17 Sente. Uh, I, let's see, you said that on move 33. Uh, this one? Yeah. Alright, so White's turn, and thus the first question thrown to the audience. You are White. Things uh, arguably went uh, okay for you. The corner is really, really small, no territory for Black to be uh, noted there. Um, but did have to get kind of surrounded in the top in order to do this. Black's got himself some influence. There are a lot of things on the board right now, so what do you think we should do? What do you think we should do? 
What should White be doing? What should he be thinking about? What are some good ideas? If the left is fine, then R6. That is a very good thing to point out. Split the right hand side, says Honey Badger. So both of your suggestions are taking into this idea that the left is fine. But is it? Can black attack the left hand side right now? Is that possible to do? Does the left have a base? Does black have strength? facing a group that has no base. Answer to these are kind sorta of, yeah. If I were to play against black right now, I would not Tanuki. Good FC, you are not supposed to. And there's no reason to. We need to strengthen ourselves. And white choose to do it aggressively. He decides I'm gonna jump out. Because you, sir, do not have shape either. I can envision poking at your shape. I can envision poking at your cut points. I can envision completely taking and connecting both of those and suddenly almost surrounding your entire group. So there are lots of very interesting things going on here. Unfortunately, it's too slow to respond to them. Because white's kind of sort of trying to get a lot on the left hand side. So, okay. Black says, I'm gonna split, I'm gonna break this up. I'm probably gonna be fine on the top, but for now we're breaking this up. And white says, no, I'm gonna haunt, I'm gonna pincer, as we knew he would because he's invested in this area. And of course, black's not gonna jump out because it doesn't make any sense to. We're all good enough here to know that there's nothing for him here and this is not a shape that we want to make right is it technically a jiseki can we can we do this yeah but all we're really doing is just making a group that's not going to really accomplish very much ever i mean the left is going to live fine the corner is going to be okay this is just an annoying thing that gets nothing done so we're not going to make it Teddy jumps out, goes to the corner. Corner is much better. We have things that we can do in the corner, like actually get points. And points rumor has it are kind of important. I mean, generally speaking, you you want them to win the game. So okay, got a bunch of points. White gets a little bit of development, but there's no reason to really care about this quite so much just yet as black. I mean, we still have Aji all over the place. I mean, any of these moves are valid for the future. So I have to keep in mind that this is just not magically all of his territory. It's still open for uh, reduction or just, you know, flat out uh, life. But black, on the other hand, ignored white. He said that F12 was not a move he had to respond to. That was pretty bold. Grolich now wants to see Keji punishing Black on the top. Indeed. Probably not going to do it by poking. I did mention that we could do something like this for... Okay, let's get rid of some of these triangles. We could do something like this, for example. But it's also possible that Black will just take a larger point and give up three stones because everything is alive and thus it's not really not really all that important. You might, maybe even by taking a large knight here, you cut, take some enclosure. That'd be larger. That'd be larger. Instead, White's going to aggressively try and cut everything off. Like, you know, it'd be really, really great. It'd be amazing, Black, if you decided to continue your territorial style and played P17. Because if you did that, I'd get a lot stronger and a nice little wall to kill you. Yeah, the uh, attack on, a, on that little string of stones there is becoming very severe indeed. 
And as much as we might want to take territory for ourselves here, we cannot do such things. I mean, if we do, we're, we're just going to get killed. Well, not killed, but we're going to be severely attacked. We'll probably give entirely too much weight to our opponent and wish we were killed. So, all right. Great. Not going to do that. If we're not going to do that, then I guess we need a base. If we need a base, we might as well pincer. So all of this so far, very straightforward. Nothing is really uh, screaming out to us like, oh my god, I don't know why they did that move, which is a complete mystery to me. You know, we can follow along with it pretty, uh, pretty well so far. Let's see how long that continues. All right. Obvious follow-up. Same with all this, very obvious follow-up. We don't really do this too much anymore. It's a bit slow. It allows your opponent to do a whole range of different things. I mean, white can think about moves like this. White can think about moves just by leaning. If we do this, eh, not a whole lot that white can lean against. Take the corner. You know, try that. But it's a little bit small to just try to live in the corner and give your opponent uh, free moves elsewhere right now. This is a crazy aggressive move. Normally, you probably wouldn't play it. I mean, if it wasn't for it, the stones on top that are in trouble, we wouldn't do this because we can immediately envision white or uh, black jumping out and suddenly having a very bad day. Under any other circumstances, we wouldn't want our opponent to do this. Because then we're just in like two groups, and normally counting to two and realizing that the groups that are weak belong to us is bad. So black jumps out. It's like, hey, I can count to two, and the groups that are weak of yours, you know, that and stuff. But this is severe. Is pressure being applied to the Q17 uh, group? Absolutely. But what about all of these stones? How is black settling this area? Because rumor has it that this this area is kind of important. And so what 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 are we going to do with this? Need to do something. Trying to keep you from connecting? Horrible idea. I mean, we can imagine this as would be probably one of the greatest failures ever if we actually tried to fight what White was doing. So, if we can't beat it, might as well go over it. And here's where things get a little bit complicated. A little bit complicated. Because now we have to kind of deal with the Q17 stones. And to do that, you kind of need a knowledge of Jusecki. White chooses to throw in, as per normal. Black connects as per normal. Extend, all of this is normal. Right up to this variation, because we don't we don't ever play this one anymore. No one likes this no one likes playing this variation. This variation is just disgusting. No one is ever happy with this. Because now there's nothing for everyone, and white's getting a bit of influence. So he plays this, and now here is where we would normally be playing something like maybe N16 as a follow-up, or N15 as a follow-up, to fight over the cutting point. 
and the Atari of Q15. White just does it immediately because by doing so, he's hurting black stones. So he's giving up a bit locally, but it's okay because he's profiting. He was hurting the outside stones, and I just ruined a tree. Bye bye, tree. To be fair, this wasn't the tree I was going to try to, you know, do in the first place. So we don't care about this tree. All right, so getting a lot of that there influence. Unfortunately, white's completely connected up. So time to deal with what black has, because black's got quite a bit of potential. Quite a bit of potential. I mean, this area might become something, this area might become something. So we need to find out what to do on both sides, or one side, or the other side, or whatever. The upside to all of this, though, is, let's see, get rid of those two. White's actually getting quite a bit from all this. I mean, White's got some territory over there. He's got development on the left. It looks like this is going to all connect up, potentially, because I don't think it can be blocked just yet. I mean, the minute that's blocked, then we see this come into play again, and a lot of bad Aji there. So, okay. In this game, we have a very, very basic uh, scenario. We have one player with a lot of territory, the other player with a lot of influence. Now, when we're dealing with professional games, usually the person with a lot of influence uh, doesn't do so well. They really like their territory. White approaches. Why? Why not? He's fine with living on the right. And this ought to do it. Black pincers. Now, when we were dealing with the left side, I said black's probably not going to jump out because no one just wants to make shape there. Here, on the other hand, Making shape in an area that's threatening to expand uh, half or maybe even with one more move, more than half of the board, that's really, really large. This is probably not an area where we just want to give up and change directions. We, we kind of really do want to live here. So white attaches to make shape. Black plays aggressively. Save stone. Threatens to come out. And this is getting a little bit weird, a little bit weird. But Black is going to try to be flexible. He's like, you know what? I have a lot of places where I can make stuff happen from. So if you want the corner, you you have that corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to live here because you got a lot of weak points. And while I'm living here, maybe I can take advantage of some of the uh, odds you're leaving behind because this is, this is very, very aggressive. But he didn't want to be too passive and just do things like this, because then that dies. He didn't want to do things just like descending simply here. Because again, not sensing anymore, so that's going to die. That was in Sente, which was great. But again, there's too many cut points, right? Do we fix this cut point now? If so, broken record. So he tries to fix that. 
but the result of which he doesn't get to protect this cut point. And White's going to try and take full advantage of it. No choice but to back out. Threatens to kill off the middle stone. Black says, no, that ain't never happening. So we get to Hane for free. It's basic shape thing. We get to Hane to head of two stones and three stones. Fixes. Okay, we got cut points behind. Time to fix those as well. So white's not confined to the corner. Black fixes his shape, makes sure he actually has some. Hmm. Now here's a question. Would you dare leave this group right now? If you were white? This happy little group on the right hand side, would we dare leave it alone? Oh, the Sith says that it is in fact fine. No doubt calling upon his many powers of the dark side. Depends on Black's answer to Q10. Hmm. I'd play something there. Can probably threaten P8, so probably fine. Yeah, it's looking like that. It's looking like that. White plays away. Because if we did something else, and black sides to cut, you all raised very good points. Between, let's see, what is it? Between this and one minute reading. What is it there? I mean, how, how? What is white gonna possibly do, or black gonna possibly do? He can't like cut through, right? Because there's a snapback. So, by virtue of the fact that white can't be cut here without black killing himself, he's actually fine. So the most black could do is this, which again is okay. Uh, peep, uh, peep is still okay because that's gonna be sente, right? You're gonna do this, and I guess just get surrounded here. You still need moves in order to profit from this, otherwise. Um, Let's see, that's a ladder, right? That goes to stones that we don't want killed, actually. Yeah, that's a really bad ladder breaker if we actually push through and cut this. Oh, snap, did I just screw up? No, I didn't, all right, good. So we got that. Black says, you know what, I don't want I, I don't want you doing that. You're not going to kill my stones. I'm going to cut you. White says, go for it. I'm now protected. Which means white's area is growing up pretty large on the left-hand side. So black ties something about it immediately. Before it grows any larger, because we can see we're not getting in there from this way anymore. And this way is rapidly closing off. And we know that there's sente moves here. There's an enormous amount of sente moves here, so this area can grow a little bit larger before black has a chance to do anything about it, if he waits any longer. So okay, he decides now is the optimal time to try to reduce this area. So he cuts, white hanes, cross cut for Aji, 
because we don't know what we're doing, so we're going to see what we can do. Black, white responds nice and strong, so we poke, see if we can get some shape. Shape's good, like shape. White connects. Time to try to control some stones. Slowly getting ourselves some shape. Forcing, trying to kill off the two stones. Nothing white can do about that. Again, same thing. But rather than mindlessly respond with an Atari, Black actually finds himself uh, under attack. White fights back here, which I thought was really, really interesting. Because, I mean, almost everybody would simply respond with, okay, time to go here, and then follow through. And we can't really lean on this, otherwise that's going to turn into unpleasantness. But no, instead he's actually fighting back, which is really, really cool. I like that a lot. His shape sucks, but I like that he's fighting back. So we go here and take, and here and take, and here and connect. Bad shape, yes, but white is fine. Black cannot connect everything up. So most of this stays as his territory, which means that black has another thing in the center. And that's critical right there. That is so bad. Because we can count to two. There's Aji all over the place. If this runs and white follows, we're connected in the center with a large knight. And by connected, I mean there's a cut point still lingering on the board. So that one really, really weird string of stones that Black created in the beginning that was actually doing pretty well. I mean, it gave shape to his... Uh, his cutting stones was threatening to attack and expand on the right hand side. I mean, white is just going after it repeatedly. A bit subtly, a bit subtle. But he is. So black says, screw this. I'm going to attack you. When it says have fun. Black tries to gain for himself. White locks out of the corner, or tries to, um, wow, words fail me. Uh, yeah, solidifying his base in said corner, as well as starting to uh, enclose. Because this group does have a few problems with it. Hoping that white, or that black, uh, just, you know, connects up nice and passive. Gives Sente back to white. Instead, white comes down, breaking in. Cuts. White ignores. Black's trying to fix his problems in the middle, because he does have quite a few of them. Unfortunately, White's just following and poking at all of them weak groups, as we do. And that is insanely, insanely brave of him. He does have a lot of stones in the area. But is he really strong enough with all the groups involved to get away with this? Does white just have to sacrifice his cutting stones? I mean, did that work? I mean, what do we do with these cutting stones? Do we just give them up? Do we try something else? Can they run away? Can they attack? Okay, how do we kill everything?
What do we do here? Try to kill everything. If I knew that, I would not be here. If you were white, what would you do? What would your move be? G14 cut. Interesting. I'd ask for an undo. Play J11. All right, this is actually what we see. Because we're primed to cut all the points. Very, very simple local move. Time Suji. Tries to create weakness, cut points, things of that sort. White said I ain't having it. More Time Sujis. Before he finally goes and connects. White says you're not connected to anything, you're mine. Black saves, white connects, game over. You can't cut anything. Nothing is in theta cut. You cut one, black, white Atari is the other. You cut the, the other one and white simply connects. So this move totally didn't work. There was nothing here for him. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of territory on the board for him either. The left is pretty large for white. The top is getting really large for white. Uh, I mean, black's got the center bit. That's really about it. And there's weak groups everywhere. So we kind of want to try and counterattack, but we can't. Because cause weaknesses, man. Because weaknesses. So there was a really, really large uh, amount of thickness that we had at the uh, beginning of the game that we thought was doing really, really well. But as the game goes on, it might be worth a little bit less than you think. Might even be a weakness if it's got uh, shape points. B got robbed. It does look like Black got robbed, doesn't it? He should immediately call the police. Someone has made off with all of his stones. Some people would look at the beginning situation for white and think, you know what, this game is the game is over. I mean, you had to live locally, black's getting a lot of thickness. I've got something that I have to worry about getting killed. So maybe I need to study Jiseki and try again. Maybe I shouldn't have gone to the three three, something like that. But uh no. It was just, it was just a bit of uh, thickness there in the center. But all right, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the lecture, and I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone.